stroke is interesting in many, many ways. First of all, it's getting closer to you. Part of it is due to an aging population. Uh, life expectancy of the people around the world increases and the incidence of stroke rises uh, in this particular population. So we're seeing more stroke in the elderly. Further than that, we are seeing more stroke in the young people. So, as I said, not as far away as you thought it might be. Number two, stroke is treatable. I think in the past it was like stroke is a disadvantage or bad luck that happened to you and you're left with the deficit in the long term. It's not like that. We have treatments. Uh, we are gaining more treatment options over the years. Number three, because stroke is preventable. Stroke usually doesn't come out of the blue. It comes with certain factors. For instance, anyone with uh, risk factors such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, these things, especially in combination, make you prone to have stroke. So, it is, stroke is preventable in a way that if we get rid of these factors, Alarming signs of strokes, anything that is a neurological problem that comes on pretty quickly. So the key word is anything change in terms of your neurological function that happens quickly or suddenly. Sometimes it can get pretty difficult to see what neurological symptoms are. To make it simple, we try to use an acronym for BEFAST, B-E-F-A-S-T. B is short for balance. So if you happen to lose your balance pretty quickly, that could be a sign of stroke. E is for your eye, eyesight. If you suddenly lose your vision or half of your vision, that could be a sign of stroke as well. F is short for face. So if one side of your face becomes droopy, that could be a sign of stroke as well because our brain also controls our facial movement. A is for arm weakness. Generally speaking, it's not only arm, it could be your leg as well. If your arm or your leg or both your arm and your leg become weak, that is a very strong suggestion that you might have had a stroke. S is for speech. So if you suddenly lose your speech, for example, if you cannot talk fluently, or if you cannot understand the other people's speech surrounding you. So please go see the doctor if you have any speech difficulty. And the last letter is T. T is actually short for time to go to the hospital. If you happen to have any of these symptoms, be fast, B-E-F-A-S-T, Let's make it simple by dividing stroke into two groups. Group number one is something we call ischemic stroke, which is a lack of blood supply to the brain. Group number two is a bleeding in the brain, or we call hematoma. Let's talk about the hematoma first. Hematoma can cause stroke in a very similar way to ischemic stroke, by that it produces a very similar set of symptoms. For example, if it compresses the motor pathway on the left side of the brain, your right side of the body might become weak. The treatment for uh, hematoma or bleeding in the brain, number one, we have to decide whether you need surgery to remove the clot or hematoma or not. Number two, we have to find the cause of why you have that bleeding in the brain. And number three, we have to get you stabilized and we usually have to admit you. Uh, we give you treatment both medically and also with physiotherapy. For another group of stroke, which is ischemic stroke, let's divide this group into two periods of time. The first acute treatment, for the first five or six hours, I think the main question would be whether we need to give you something that is useful to you. Number two, we have to consider something we call 
mechanical thrombectomy, which is a mechanical retrieval of the clot. Uh, you might be familiar with a coronary angiogram where we put a catheter into the artery, but instead of going to the heart like a coronary angiogram, we go to the brain. These two treatment is available in the first few hours of stroke. In terms of the other treatment that is uh, available for ischemic stroke or lack of blood supply, includes use of medicine to help with the brain that suffers from the lack of blood or nutrients. Along with that, we can give you treatment with physiotherapy. All of these treatments should be started as early as possible. So the key thing here is please come to the hospital early so we can make a diagnosis early and we can give you the treatment straight away. It is a common practice to admit all the patients with stroke to the hospital. Patients with severe stroke might be admitted in ICU. We are very proud of our ICU because it's very well equipped with both medical staffs and equipment in a way that we call it Smart ICU. Smart ICU is an innovative use of medical informatics technology. We use the software to collect clinical data of each patient. The computer processes and presents large amount of data in a real-time fashion to help clinicians design the treatment plans. The Smart ICU system is very helpful for ICU patients like stroke and epilepsy patients who need the most effective treatment in a timely manner. And also helpful for our network hospitals via telemedicine system. The Smart ICU uses the principles of real-time data collection, integration of information, and action reaction. The physicians and nurses in the ICU can use this system to collect the data, monitor the results, and adjust the treatment to best suit each patient's need at any time. The key point of treating stroke patients in Smart ICU is to find the etiology of stroke the patient can have ischemic stroke from arteriosclerosis or cardioembolic causes. So we try to find the, the cause of stroke and give the direct treatment and start the secondary prevention of stroke. We also try to early recognize the secondary complication of stroke and treat it, such as intracerebral hemorrhage uh, and also the cerebral edema that can occur in stroke patients.